Welcome back to Train Signal Citrix ZenApp Training. You're watching the installing and configuring ZenApp 6 lesson. So we're almost ready to start installing ZenApp 6. But in this lesson, we're going to talk about some of the hardware, some of the software requirements, some of the things to watch out for before you actually start the installation. So we're going to talk about the ZenApp Server Role Manager. We've touched a little bit on that in previous lessons, but we're going to expand a little bit and see what you can do with Server Role Manager. We're going to look at the hardware requirements, the software requirements for the ZenApp server, for the delivery services console, for the web interface, so on and so forth. We're going to take a look at the hardware and software requirements also for the database that's going to house your data store. We're going to talk about which type of database to use with which data store and how large the environment needs to be before you can make a decision on what type of database software to use. We're going to talk about installing ZenApp from the command line. So not only are we going to show you how to install ZenApp from a GUI, we're also going to talk about the different syntax, the different commands, the options that you can use from a command line, and we're also going to go through a, an example of how to install ZenApp from a command line. Now this is useful for those of you, those enthusiasts out there that want to script the installations and you know, do an unattended install per se. So that particular slide and this particular demonstration will help you build your script if you're interested in scripting that sort of stuff. So as I talked or as I specified in earlier lessons, ZenApp and Citrix in general is taking the same approach to modularizing the way you install roles on your server. So for example, with Windows Server 2008, you have a role for DNS, you have a role for IIS, so on and so forth. That particular role, when you install it, will also install all the prerequisites needed for that role. So you can see how it can make the installation and configuration of your server are that much more easy. Now again, if you want more information on Windows Server 2008, I strongly recommend you look at the train signal offering uh, for that particular software. But what Citrix has done as well is they've taken the same approach. So in the past, if you wanted to install a ZenApp server, you'd have to go through a series of installation. Now what you do is you also have a ZenApp server role manager which allows you to specify what type of server this is. So this can be a ZenApp server, this could be a, a licensed server, it could be a web interface server. You can install subcomponents as well. So for example, uh, the Citrix ZenApp server will automatically install the prerequisites needed for that particular server. All about it won't install the database server. So that's the only requirement that's still a manual process, but it'll install all the other components necessary to install a ZenApp server. Same thing for the web interface and for the license server. All the prerequisites, all the requirements are going to be part of that role that you add and you install as part of the server. Now, ZenApp Server Role Manager can also install the single sign-on services if you choose to do so. It'll install the power and capacity management administration, the edge site server, provisioning services. So depending on the edition of ZenApp that you're using, you might or you might not see some of these features during the installation during the Server Role Manager. So Server Role Manager significantly simplifies the installation of ZenApp. Previously for, for those of us that you know that have been around and have been doing this for a while, the installation of MetaFrame and WinFrame and, and 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 wasn't this easy. The prerequisites were difficult. I mean installing a Citrix server would take two days because you had to tweak it afterwards. I mean, it was really a, a very cumbersome, very time consuming process. Well today when I look at how easy it is to install ZenApp 6, I'm like wow. Those I mean we've wasted several hours, several days building Citrix servers. It's just so easy these days. So ZenApp 6 has really taken a, a huge leap forward in terms of how simplistic it's made the installation of a ZenApp server. Now these hardware requirements, again I've borrowed these from, from the Citrix website so you know don't live in, or die by these. You'll notice that they're very very generalized recommendations and requirements from a CPU, memory, a disk space, uh, and I've added also the web interface requirements in there from a hardware perspective. These are just simple guidelines. Obviously, uh, in your environment, it might be more than this. These are the, the bare minimum. So, you know, you'll have to size your environment accordingly based on the application, the user load, how much you're expecting, you know, the profile of the application. Is it memory intensive? Is it CPU intensive? So on and so forth. You'll have to gauge that and do all the necessary testing ahead of time before you order the hardware. If it's a hardware approach that you're taking to ZenApp, if it's a virtual server approach that you're taking to ZenApp, then you'll have to size your virtual host accordingly so it could absorb the number of virtual machines that will be running ZenApp as well. 
So these are just some hardware requirements. So I'm going to let you go through this. You can feel free to pause the video at this point. Again, I've borrowed these from the Citrix website. And the same goes for the software requirements here. So from a software requirements perspective, you have to note that with Windows Server 2008 R2 is the only supported 64-bit operating system at this point for ZenApp 6. I'm sure moving forward, all future Windows Server 2008, 2010, whatever it's going to be, will also support ZenApp 6. But the, but the, the takeaway here is that earlier versions will not support it. Now, from a Windows Server 2008 R2 perspective, all editions are supported with the exception of the web server edition. And also, if you're doing a core installation of Windows Server 2008, that wouldn't be supported for uh, ZenApp 6. I'll let you go through all the other requirements. The other thing I want you to pay attention to here is never, ever, ever install ZenApp on a domain controller. It is not a supported installation, and you should not be doing it. You should also not be joining ZenApp 6 to a farm running earlier versions of ZenApp, and I'll touch on that a little later on in the next few slides here. So from uh, DSC will stand for um, Delivery Services Console. That's the management console that you will need to manage your ZenApp environment. These are the software requirements. These are the support operating systems that you can install this uh, management console on if you want to use it outside of the ZenApp server environment. Web interface software requirements. Again, these are you know data that I've collected from the Citrix website. So again, these are the web interface software requirements that you will need. Data store database requirements. This is very important. It's the database. It's what's going to hold the configuration. All ZenApp servers connect to it. So it's very important to understand and know what are the requirements, what can you install the data store on, and what you cannot install the data store on. So I've noted here, again, these are excerpts from the Citrix website. This is nothing I've come up with or anything like that. So these are some things just to note and, and, and understand. So another couple of slides that I've borrowed from Citrix here. I'm not going to keep mentioning this, but it gives you an idea of how Citrix classifies environments and it's important to to note these because the next couple of slides are kind of built on top of these uh, and you should measure th this slide by your environment so you understand from a Citrix perspective if they're looking at your environment as a small medium large or enterprise how they're classifying the environment makes a lot of difference and they're classifying it based on servers based on named users based on applications so you can determine exactly where you fit uh, from the server classification perspective. Sample farm configuration. Well, so now that we've, in the earlier slide, understood how Citrix is classifying the environments, what we're seeing here is a sample farm configuration. So you'll note what I have here is A, B, C, D, E. These are farm configurations based on all of these metrics that we're collecting and all of this data. So for example, sample farm configuration A, the database is 32 meg in size. So I mean, you'll notice that it's nothing. 32 meg is a very small footprint for a database server and then goes up from there. So you'll be able to take or try to fit your environment in one of these if you're trying to give these metrics, if you're trying to tell your SQL or Oracle or your DBA in general, hey, you know, they're going to ask you, well, how big do you want the database? In order for you to be able to answer this question, you probably want to use this table a little bit to understand what your environment looks like, what it might look like in the future, and then give them the size requirements. But you'll notice it is very, very small. Now, given the earlier slide, and again, you'll notice here we have the same sample farm configuration but depending on which sample farm configuration you fell under you'll be able to also size the server hardware that's going to run your database server so again if your database server is going to be running on a VM you can size it accordingly but if it's a physical machine then these are some guidelines some hardware recommendations on what sort of the minimum specs would need to be based on the sample farm configuration that you found in your environment now, from a data store database recommendations perspective, these are just some general guidelines, if I can call them, on what to do and what not to do from a data store database recommendation perspective. So Microsoft SQL Server and Oracle are suited for any size environment. If you can afford it, that's the right way to go. Put your server, your database server on its own 
uh, server and have everything connect to it. But if you're in an environment where it's a small environment, one to two servers, or if it's a very medium sized environment, there's no WAN involved, nothing like that, then you know you can get away with the SQL Express version, which is free and you can save some money. Now, anytime you get into the circumstance where the WAN is involved, where you have ZenApp servers at another location, then at that point, having two SQL or two Oracle databases for that matter in each one of these regions in each one of these geographically separate regions can significantly help performance and and why is that the reason for that is because of replication so think about it this way if you have ZenApp servers in Chicago and ZenApp servers in Las Vegas and your database server is in Chicago that means the Las Vegas servers would have to connect via ODBC over the WAN into the Chicago database server I mean that could cause significant performance degradation issues so what you could do if you're using SQL or Oracle is you would enable SQL replication for example or Oracle replication you would put a database server in Chicago and a database server in Las Vegas the ZenApp servers that are in Chicago point to the SQL server in Chicago the ZenApp servers in Las Vegas would point to the database server in Las Vegas. What happens then between the two database servers is they replicate. Any changes you make in the Las Vegas database automatically get replicated to Chicago and vice versa. By that, what you've done is you've minimized the traffic that the, the Citrix or the ZenApp servers are communicating locally and only the replicated information is crossing the WAN. So you significantly reduce the performance hit that you get out of having a database server remotely. Um, in some instances I've seen it where the independent management architecture, the IMA service, will not start when the ZenApp server and the database server are in two geographically dispersed locations. So if, you're, if they're crossing the WAN, for example, the IMA service won't even start, especially if you're installing a ZenApp server fresh and there's a lot of printer drivers in that database and database is a little big the IMA service might not start properly. We've seen that with the presentation server with MetaFrame. It is a little better with ZenApp, but you still see issues if you're trying to configure a ZenApp server when its data store is somewhere else. So pay close attention to that. Um, the other thing to note is best practice dictates that you not install ZenApp on the database server. So do not install your ZenApp on a database server like SQL or Oracle, so on and so forth. Now you'll notice for the purposes of our demonstration, we're actually going to break the best practice. We will be installing SQL Server Express to, to some extent because we have a small environment and we'll be installing ZenApp Server on top of that. But best practice dictates in an environment, unless you absolutely are using it for test dev or a very small implementation, you should definitely not install ZenApp on the database server, uh, especially on SQL or Oracle. SQL Server Express is a little you know, easier to accept, but not on full-blown SQL or Oracle. Also ensure a solid backup of your data store database. It's very important to understand that if you lose the data store database, you've lost the farm. Um, there's nothing really you can do about it to recover from it. So always make sure you have a good copy uh, of your data store backed up so that you don't lose everything. Because if you lose the farm, you're going to have to recreate the farm, add all the servers, uh, reconfigure everything, recreate the policies, reconfigure the applications. It is not something that is fun, trust me. And even if you don't lose the database, in some cases there might be replication or there might be corruption that happens in the database. You know, we live in a virtual environment. If your data center loses power and everything crashes for whatever, reason if it comes back up there might be corruption so it's very important it's imperative and I can't stress this enough because I, I've had I've pulled my hair trying to fix environments where there were corruption in the database it wasn't even a lost database so make sure you always have a very solid backup of your data store database server or database itself because it will save you significant time Final thoughts before the installation, some things that you need to know, some things that you need to have. We're obviously going to be installed. We're going to need an, a user user account with administrative rights on the server before we can install ZenApp. So that, that's almost a given. ZenApp 6 uh, server cannot be joined to earlier ZenApp farms. I mentioned this before, but I want to stress this and reiterate it. So if you have a ZenApp 5, ZenApp 4, 5, MetaFrame, WinFrame, whatever you have prior to ZenApp 6, you cannot have a ZenApp 6 farm coexisting with a ZenApp uh, with an earlier version of ZenApp so for and vice versa so you can't have a ZenApp 5 farm in your ZenApp 6 farm either so that that should be very clear Citrix is trying to make you it's forcing everybody to start fresh with ZenApp 6 and not try to upgrade any of the earlier 
environments. Uh, ensure Windows is uh, has all the right patching, so Windows should be patched to the to the max, to the, to the level up to date. All hardware drivers should be also up to date. If you need NIC drivers, or, you know, video card drivers, whatever, those should all be up to date. Your clock should be properly synced based on the time zone, and it should be synced correctly, so the time should be right. Uh, usually, if it's part of the domain, it'll it's going to sync with the PDC on the domain controller anyway, so the time should be accurate on the domain. Make sure that time issues can can cause a lot of uh, small problems that take longer to detect. So just avoid it altogether and make sure your time is correct. And a very, very, very important thing to note before we get started is that all applications should be installed after you install ZenApp. So you patch your server, you install the drivers, you install ZenApp, and then you install your applications. No application should be installed prior to ZenApp. I cannot stress enough how important this is and how much you'll avoid issues by doing this and following this very simple rule. No applications before ZenApp, ZenApp goes first. You guys ready? Let's go ahead and install ZenApp. Now the first thing that you're going to need is you're obviously going to need the ZenApp installation files. You're going to need the media files. And you can put this in the, the CD-ROM and load it that way. You can copy it on the desktop as I've done here. It's up to you as long as you have the media files. Now in my case again, I am going to install a SQL Server Express Edition on my ZenApp server just because I have a small environment and it's easier for me to demo that. Now in your environment I would strongly recommend SQL Server or Oracle something dedicated a dedicated server where you're storing the database especially if, in, if you're in a larger environment make sure your DBA is backing up that database properly and it's just safer and it'll perform much much better if it's on its own dedicated database server and as such if you're installing the SQL Express, now all the ZenApp servers has a dependency on this particular ZenApp server to be up and running. But when it's on its own, then the dependency is on the database server, which is typically on a cluster or high, has higher availability, higher uptime when it's on its own, and the environment is configured for it to support high availability. So I strongly recommend that you do that. I'm going to run the GUI for the installation of ZenApp by running the autorun command. And this comes up with the initial wizard here. We're going to click on install ZenApp server. And it's automatically telling you that, hey, you know, I've noticed that the .NET 3.5 SP1 is not installed on the system. Click OK to install .NET 3.5 SP1. So again, it's automatically starting to notice that, hey, there are some prerequisites that are not available that I need before I can let you pass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on OK and have it install .NET 3.5 SP1 for me. Alright, so as soon as that was completed, the installation was completed, you'll notice that it automatically brought me to the Citrix ZenApp Server Role Manager that allows me to specify what type of role am I trying to make out of this server. What, what, what is the function that this server is going to serve? So you'll notice here you have the review setup information if you wanted to. For our purposes, what we're going to do is we're going to add a server role immediately. So I'm going to click on Add Server Role. And now you have to select which edition of ZenApp you've been licensed for or that you intend on using. So in my case, I have Enterprise Edition. So I'm going to go ahead and select Enterprise Edition here. I'm going to accept the license agreement and click on Next. And this is where you specify what type of role you are trying to configure, what type of role you're making the server into. So we've already installed the license server on another server in earlier lessons, so we're not going to install the license server role. We are going to install the ZenApp role, and we're also going to install the web interface role. Now in your environment, I strongly recommend that the web interface and ZenApp be on separate dedicated servers, but for the purpose of my demonstration, it will make my life easier and the demonstrations that are on screen easier, I'm going to try to do some consolidation here so that I can make it easier to demo. So in your environment, again, I would recommend you split it, especially if it's in a larger environment. Now you'll notice these are some of the common roles that you can install, and these are some of the other roles that are available. So you have Secure Gateway that you can install, you have Power and Capacity Management, you have Edge Site. Now keep in mind, I selected the Enterprise Edition, so I'm not seeing provisioning server down here. So if I go back and we select the Platinum Edition of ZenApp, you'll have more roles in the other roles here that you can install and that you can configure. So if I click on 
the information here, you'll notice it, it, it gives you uh, an informational button sort of of what's going on, what you're installing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're not going to use that, but we're going to click on on next. And now you have the ability to take a look at what. Well, you're installing the Zen app role. The Zen app role, like I said, has a list of prerequisites. So what are the prerequisites for Zen app? By default, it has two prerequisites. And if you expand it here, you'll see the two prerequisites that are needed as part of Zen app. Now, some of the optional components that you can install as part of Zen app as well is XML service and IIS integration. And that's going to be necessary for me since I'm installing web interface. So I'm going to go ahead and select that I want to integrate my XML service with my IIS because I'm about to install IIS on the server. So otherwise, if I don't do the integration, then the XML service will either have a conflict with the IIS port, which because they're both going to try to use port 80. So you, you need to integrate them or you need to change the port on which the XML service is listening on for the sake of simplicity. And because I don't want to re-architect the whole Zen app environment again, you know, around the new XML service port I'm gonna have the XML service and IIS ports integrated now if you were installing any of the sub features here you can select any of the other checkboxes you can do the same thing for web interface you'll notice that these are the default components that web interface needs in order to install properly so once you've gone through all of these you can click on next to move forward and you'll notice here, this is really cool, uh, that it's selecting or that it's telling you all of the different requirements that it's going to do, all the different changes that it's going to do to the server before it can install this role. Keep in mind, and for those of us that remember, those were all manual steps back in the day. You had to install all these components, configure all these components. Can you believe it's actually going to install IIS automatically for you? It's going to configure IIS for you. It's installing the Visual C++. It, it, it does everything for it. It's so streamlined. You guys have it easy. <laughs> we should take you 10 years back and see how difficult it was for us to install MetaFrame and WinFrame and all, all the good stuff. Now, you'll also notice here that there's a, re uh, a restart that's required as part of this installation process. So we're going to go through that as well. So once you've, you've gone through all of these and you're comfortable with it, we're going to click on Next. And that's that's all there is to it. This is pretty much um, a summary here of what it's about to do. And you're going to click on install and it's going to go do its thing. It's going to start installing all these components and configuring everything. Now we're at the point where we have to restart the server. So it's saying, please close the window and restart the server to resume. So that's exactly what we're going to do. All right, now that the server has restarted, you'll notice that the ZenApp Server Role Manager has also automatically restarted, and it's prompting us, hey, I need you to resume the install here. So we're going to click on Resume, and click on Install. And there you go. Once uh, the wizard is completed, the installation is complete, we we'll click on Finish here. And there it is. So now that the installation is completed, we still have to configure. We still have to do the basic configuration of Zen app in order to complete this lesson. And then in, in later lessons, we'll dig into the more advanced configurations of Zen app and of web interface. But I, I really want to finish the basic configuration here. So what we're going to do is from the, uh, the, the server role manager, we're going to click on configure. And it's automatically going to launch the wizard that would allow me to configure my Zen app server. So if this was the second Zen app that you're adding into the farm, you obviously use the join an existing server farm because this is the very first uh, server that's going to create the farm that's going to initialize the database. We want to go ahead and do create a new server farm. We are going to give our farm a name. In my case, I'm going to make it Encom. And I'm going to use the Encom administrator as the first administrator as my first farm administrator. I'm going to click on next. We're going to actually point to an existing licensing server. And in my case, I'm going to point it to ctx-lic01.encom.local because we've already created and installed our license server. So you can do fully qualified domain name. You can do IP address here. If you're using the default port, then there's nothing else that you need to change. If you've changed the default port on which the license server is listening, then you would uncheck this box and put in the right port here. So we're going to click on next to move forward. And this is where you would configure your 
database data or your data store database if you're using sql express as i am then you want to create the new database here if you have an existing microsoft sql server database somewhere else on the remote server somewhere you would select the second option so i'm going to stick with the first option here we're going to click on next we're going to enter the username and password in my case i'm just going to do administrator and we're going to put in the password we're going to click on next now this is where you would allow or prohibit the shadowing of sessions among other things so if you select prohibit and you have to be careful with this if you select prohibit you won't be able to change this later on so what I would recommend is allow shadowing at this point and if you need to disable it or configure it or tweak it or limit it you can do so with policy later on but at least allow the the ability to shadow on the server and then you can configure how you want to enable shadowing on the server so you want to force a shadow acceptance pop-up so basically when an administrator is trying to shadow a user session he can't shadow it in stealth mode where the user doesn't know that he's being shadowed or she's being shadowed and you know someone's looking over their shoulder so by selecting this checkbox the user is always going to get a pop-up and the user is always gonna have to accept that someone is gonna shadow them otherwise that will not happen in some cases that is a requirement that is dictated by certain policies and certain procedures that are in place at your company so you can also force logging on all shadowing connections if you wanted to have a stub or a log of what's going on for my purposes I'm also I'm just going to select right now um, force a shadow acceptance uh, pop-up which is a, a basic essential for allowing shadowing here you can also prohibit remote control if you wanted to never allow someone to remote control a session but we can control these from policy later on so we're going to go ahead and click on next now zones as we've we talked about earlier zones are important because they're used to group uh, Zen app servers that are geographically in the same region typically what I like to do with my zones is I just like to do uh, the subnet that they're in so for example if it's 192.168.0.0 then that's the name of the zone that's what identifies the zone And if I have a remote zone somewhere else then I'll use that subnet over there where the Zenapp servers are located in and it helps me to identify the servers easier we talked about this earlier you want to group your Zenapp servers um, geographically where they're at that'll improve performance and not allow the IMA uh, port to talk or the IMA protocol to talk all over the place with all the different Zenapp servers the XML service here now we've already pre-configured the XML service to integrate with IIS so in this case it's all grayed out now had I not configured that or made that part of my sub role I would have been able to come in here and change the port at which the XML service is going to run at now I've configured it to integrate with IIS and run on port 80 you could have changed that if you needed to at this point we are not going to integrate or configure the online plugin to integrate with our web interface server even though we've installed it I want to leave that for a later lesson but if you wanted to do that if you wanted to integrate your online plugin at this point by providing the fully qualified domain name or the URL of your web interface server then you could put it in here and then the last thing I want to talk about here is remote desktop users in the past when we were installing Zen app or presentation server or so on and so forth we had to add users to remote desktop users group on the local machine or you know to be able to allow users to connect to this particular machine in this case the wizard is saying hey I'm gonna add these users automatically for you I'm gonna add the anonymous users and I'm also gonna allow add the list of users from the users group so you can tweak this any way you want I usually like to take out the anonymous users but for the purposes of keeping the demo complete I'm gonna let it run with all the details defaults at this point now when you're ready you can feel free to click next to continue and that's it we're gonna go ahead and apply all the different configuration that we've just made to the server I'll take a few seconds here and we'll apply everything that we've just created and bring up the server farm and once it's complete we're gonna click on finish and there you go a reboot is required in order to finalize the server but this will conclude the GUI installation of Zenapp server. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a reboot here. Now that we finished installing Zenapp through the GUI, I want to talk to you guys about how to install Zenapp from a command line. 
For those of you again that want to script the installation or that you know want to do unattended installs, the command line features and functionality of Zenapp are very rich. So for starters, to locate the Zenapp setup console.exe, which is the main file that you're going to run with different options and, and syntax, in order to locate that file, it's located on the Zenapp Media CD or DVD or ISO, whichever one you've downloaded, in the Zenapp server setup directory under the bin directory. Um, once you have that, you'll be able to run the command zenapp server console.exe and you'll be able to specify options and optional properties, of course. So for starters, if you do a forward slash help, it's going to display commands and help, so on and so forth. Forward slash log file, colon path, obviously it's going to, you'll be able to specify the path where the log file is going to be generated during the installation. And then forward slash install items basically specifies which items you're going to install right so if you specify edge site server you're obviously installing the edge site server licensing merchandising server etc i didn't you know give a description for those they're pretty much self-explanatory the ones that i did give description for because they're a little more difficult to guess so in this case it's power and capacity management admin components and then down here you have the single sign-on services now, you can also, of course, if you're trying to install Zenapp through the, the command line, as the slide might uh, imply, then Zenapp has a list of other components that you can specify. So if you say, I want to install Zenapp, then you have the options of saying, okay, well, I want to install Zenapp IIS integration, which means the XML service is going to be integrated with IIS. So if IIS is already going to be installed on the Zenapp server, then there's going to be an integration if they're sharing the same port, which is typically port 80. So if IS is sharing uh, using port 80, then Zenapp will share that. So this is what you're saying here. You want to specify that. Again, here you're uh, installing the agent, agent feature, a smart um, auditor agent feature, single sign-on, provisioning. So again, very self-explanatory here. Now, the interesting thing is you can also specify what you want to exclude. So there might be certain items that you don't want to install as part of the installation, such as, for example, you might not want to install the delivery services console on this particular Zenapp server, or you might not want to have Zenapp and IAS integration. So by using the forward slash exclude and then the item command, you're able to specify which items you want to exclude. Now, by default, if you don't specify which edition of Zenapp you want to install, it's automatically going to install or assume that you want to install the Platinum Edition. Otherwise, you have the option of selecting which edition you want to install, for example, Platinum, Enterprise, or Advanced. Now, some other things here to consider. Uh, if you don't specify the install directory, it's going to just install in the default directory. If you want to have a specific path to a directory, then obviously you would use install dir equals and you know put that directory in there. If you want to install the plugin in a different directory, again, you would have to uh, use online plugin, etc., etc., and, and just specify. Now, some examples on how to use the command line. If you do zen setup console exe forward slash install zen app, or slash platinum, what you're doing here is you're basically installing Zenapp Server Platinum Edition in, all the, in the default location. If you're installing um, Zenapp Platinum Edition and Web Interface into C program files backslash Citrix, technically this is also the default, but just for the purposes of the example, is just illustrating how you would be able to specify uh, where you want to install it in or specify the, the installer. So this would be the uh, the installation. The one thing to notice here is when you want to install more items, you just use a comma to basically say, okay, I'm installing Zenapp and I'm also installing web interface and this is the directory where I want to install them. And down here, what you're doing is uh, you're also installing Zenapp. You're installing the single sign-on agent, but you're excluding the Zenapp console installation. So in this case, you don't want to install the delivery services console um, onto the server. So now let's go ahead and switch back to the demonstration and go through some of these examples. Okay, so what I've done is I've created a new virtual machine specifically in order for us to install Zenapp from a command line. Now, what I'm going to do is when we were going through the GUI installation, we went through the installation of Zenapp and we also decided that we're going to install web interface and we decided that we weren't going to install the license server. So what I want to do is construct a command line 
that mimics the same thing that we did with the GUI, except we're going to do it this time from a command line. So in order to do that, we are going through the command zenapp setup console.exe forward slash install zenapp, comma web interface. We're going to exclude the licensing server and we're, and we're installing zenapp in an uh, in enterprise edition. Now here's a couple of things for you to note about the installation from command line. You need to make sure you've met the prerequisites for Zenapp. Otherwise, Zenapp will either give you an error or it will force you to reboot. So you'll have a mid-install reboot. So for example, if the .NET Framework 3.5 SP1 isn't installed and you try to run the command line, then Zenapp will come back with an error. It just won't install. And it won't install it for you automatically, as is the case with the GUI. So there are some caveats to, to pay attention to. The other thing is if you don't install the remote desktop services, the session host and the remote desktop management, all the, re the prerequisites for Zenapp to install, it'll install them for you. So it installs the roles for you, but then there will be a mid-install reboot where you would have to reboot the server and then click on resume install. Now, during the course of the installation of Zenapp, if there are any components that are missing, that might they won't prompt a server reboot but what will happen is it will prompt you to intervene so you'll have to come back in and manually click resume install because there could have been a component during the installation that was detected it wasn't installed on the Zenapp server that is a requirement it'll install it but then you have to click on resume install so just a couple of things to pay attention to here so what I'm going to do after I've reconstructed the command the way I like it I'm just going to select all copy then we're going to go ahead and open a command prompt now I've already copied the Zenapp source files or the media files onto my C drive in a directory called XA6 and there what we want to do is I'm going to do a quick dir and then we're going to do a CD and we're going to go into Zenapp server setup so we're going to do Zenapp server setup and we're also going to go into whoops we're going to go into the bin folder once we're in the bin folder this is where you will be able to find the particular command that we're trying to run so in this case this is the command that we're trying to run so this this command will be located into in this directory once you're ready we're going to paste this command in here and we are just gonna click on enter I'm gonna go ahead and minimize background here As you can see, there's nothing particularly interesting about the command line setup. It's going to go through and do its own thing. Now, the only thing I want to reiterate is if during the setup, it notices or it detects that there are certain components that it needs to install, then this window might come up sooner. It'll install that component and then it'll prompt you to click on resume install and you'll have to click on resume install before it could go about and do its thing. Now, once the installation is complete, you're going to get to the same basically screen that you got to when we installed it through the GUI where it now gives you the option of configuring the particular Zenapp server and configuring Zenapp. So that's all there is to it from a command line installation perspective. Let's go ahead and switch back to our presentation now. Alright, so let's recap what we've covered in this lesson. We started off by talking about the Zenapp Server Role Manager and how that is very similar to the Windows 2008 Server Role Manager, how it takes a role, install all of the prerequisites for that role, and installs it. So you'll, you have the ability to install Zenapp, you have the ability to install License Server, you have the ability to install the web interface, etc., etc., and it's going to take all the prerequisites, all the requirements, and install them automatically for you, thereby streamlining the installation of your Zenapp server and making it very easy and effortless to some point. We then looked at the hardware requirements that are needed to install Zenapp. Again, there are, those are minimum requirements that Citrix puts out there. Those are definitely not the right requirements for your environment based on the application, the user load, the profile of the application. That's what's going to dictate 
the hardware requirements in your particular environment. We also looked at the software requirement from a ZenApp standpoint, what version of Windows, what are the .NET framework, etc., etc., that are needed for ZenApp. We looked at the database requirements, the web interface requirements, the delivery services console requirement, which is the management tool that you use to manage your ZenApp environment. We looked at all of these components from a software requirement standpoint. Then we looked at the data store database requirements. We went through the different scenarios. We talked about data store database recommendations, what you need to do, what your environment looks like, how Citrix categorizes or classifies environments so that you know where you fit in. And I gave you and I showed you what Citrix is recommending from a sample farm configuration perspective so that you can size your data store accordingly. We also talked about some recommendations on what to do and what not to do from a data store database recommendations perspective. We went through the installation of the GUI, of course. Uh, we went through that successfully. And then we also talked about installing ZenApp from the command line. So not only did we go through an installation of ZenApp from the GUI, we also installed ZenApp through a command line. And we talked extensively about the richness of the command line interface that comes with ZenApp and your ability to almost script every minute detail of the ZenApp installation. And we showed you the different options, the different syntax that you can use with the command line. Finally, I hope this lesson was informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.